Welcome back to the Masters of Materium in our series covering deeds and buildings and admiring Alum's incredible work where he essentially recreated all of the deeds in Mirandus in a game called Valheim. If you haven't watched our Homestead video, make sure you check that out. Grill, let's get right into it. Let's check out the outpost. All right, one outpost coming up. All right, so we got the outpost. First, we got the plot map. If anyone wants to talk about that. Uh, sure. So on the left-hand side, we have the RPG Maker-based plot map. And the right side, similar to the Homestead, uh, we have the overhead view that's consistent with that plot map. Um, on these particular building configurations, uh, you know, they're not specifically what I would be making for them. These are just potential options for a particular outpost. Like we have a wood shop, hitching post, tent bread stand, a simp tannery. It would be functional like that. They're most likely significantly um, more optimal or functional options than that. But uh, the outpost is uh, a nice deed, a, a significant step up from the homestead for sure. The only thing I don't like about comparing it to the NFT picture is that you lose so much of the 10 by 20 space with that like wooden exterior fence. And this is something you noticed in play test uh, number three, where the inside of the outpost home, literally you, you could barely even walk around the bed because so much of the space was used for, you know, non um, foundational uh, walls and stuff of the, uh, the outpost home. But uh, other than that, uh, the outpost uh, is, is quite nice. This here is as consistent as, you know, I could make it in terms of the limitations of Valheim. A couple more. We'll go through the slides here real quick. This is uh, early stages of the outpost being built. This is the path going from the town of the Duke to the outpost. Here's another view of the building foundations before the buildings are put up. Now you have all the buildings up and the farming plots uh, seated. The thing that I would like to mention on these ones too is the walls. So every single deed that's a higher tier, I increase the tier of the walls as well. So the homestead having none, the outpost having kind of this, you know, more defensive designed walls. And from there all the way up to the Archduke with, you know, multi-scale leveled ramparts one more aerial shot then we get some pictures from inside so that's the wood shop at the ground level then we got the tent bread stand and tannery on the other side let's let's talk about the wood shop we were meant to talk about this before we hit record uh Elam, why the wood shop well i would actually likely put a wood shop on my own outpost. Uh, this particular one is right next to a forest. Like that's in the game that's called the Black Forest, what you see in the background there. Um, so someone using an outpost like this would use it for that purpose. And typically if you want to be as efficient as possible, you want to limit your, you know, your travel or your transport time and energy between uh, your gathering location and your processing location. Woodshop as well, and this is a true with most of the buildings, um, you can both sell things out of shops and you can also uh, use them. So in this case here, you see you have like a workbench there with some tools and such, and then you have the various different types of lumber and firewood, etc. for, you know, various uses, whether you're going to use it for fire or for heating or if you're going to use it for potentially to make you know charcoal for making weapons or for building buildings upgrading walls etc so yeah that's kind of the the logic behind the uh, the wood shop in this case but there's many many potential decent 10 by 10 specifically on the outpost given that a 10 by 10 is the largest building on the outpost or its function will be dictated based on more or less what you're using as the 10 by 10. yeah we talked about also the double outpost strategy in one of our deed videos so if you haven't watched that check out our older content 
And obviously, if you have two outposts side by side, that really opens things up. Um, some other options for a 10 by 10 is a cemetery, especially with the double outposts. If you had a cemetery and a tavern and the other one, uh, you could have some, some really powerful combinations. And we'll, we'll be sharing what we think are some viable building options for all the Ds in a spreadsheet soon, as well as doing a, a tier video on all of it. So just real quick, ahead. all these buildings are interactive and usable in game uh, for their actual function. Like you'll make bread at the bread stand. You can make wep you know, make weapons and or tools at the woodshed. Uh, so you'll be able to do everything inside this game if you come and play with us. So a couple more shots, the home, and then inside the very yeah. narrow home, very cramped in there. It's pretty consistent size-wise, though, with the, the Playtest 3 home, right? It is, it is, because you could barely walk around the bed in that one. So we got a little video here. So this here is the pathway walking from the homestead to the uh, outpost. Now you're seeing a lot of workbenches. The, the, the reason why those are there is they prevent the spawning of mobs. And when I'm trying to construct all of these various deeds, I don't want mobs like constantly attacking me because this is an actual fully playable game, right? So it'd be similar to I get what you'd expect probably in Mirandus if you're having raids and stuff on your town. But uh, that's one way of preventing it. Here you have a hitching post. Um, I, I can see a hitching post being pretty much on almost every outpost. The, uh, the tent there, that'll help you restore your hit points. The bread will give you energy regeneration. There's Grill waving away and he's checking out the, uh, as you see, it's functional. You can use the, uh, the stone oven there. Virtual looks like he's crafting some stuff at the simple tannery there. Working hard. And, uh, you're working hard for sure, man. Uh, portals, there's no portals um, in Miranda. The one thing with all of these deeds is we have a area that can transport to every different deed. And there's also observation decks in the air. Um, so you can look down on the deeds, very similar to the overhead view of the picture we started the video with. And in these observation decks, it's all the data of all the deeds, you know, all the different plot sizes, the number of plots, et cetera. So um, it gives you a kind of a good idea what the deeds actually comprise of. And then, of course, you can use the other portal or you can, you know, sail to the places or walk or whatever to uh, get a better idea of what they feel like. And being able to actually go inside the deeds is very different than you know, even looking at the videos, we, if you can actually feel it out. Do you think Gal is going to sell a Cape NFT for a million dollars and fly around? Uh, no, but uh, <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if they did. So I'm not going to say they're not. And that's it. Thanks for watching the Outpost video. We'll be back with more content, including all the hamlets, all the villages, all the towns. So make sure you check that out. If you're interested in joining the Masters of Materium, check us out, mastermaterium.com. Join our Discord. We are wide open for every single person. And if you haven't watched our older content on exemplars and other really good content, check it out. And make sure you hit the subscribe button gently and comment and share. Let us know which buildings you would put on the deed. Grill, final thoughts? Uh, not much. Let's move on to the next one here. Let's keep going. Make sure you come and Watch our farming Hamlet videos. Thanks. That's right. What's up next?